Okay, so here's the idea. I'm gonna take this steel wool and I'm gonna see if I can make red iron oxide or some sort of iron oxide happen. Uh, I'm not sure which way is gonna work best or which way to do it, so I'm gonna do it three ways. I'm gonna take one and I have a just a bisque ware cup and I'm gonna put that in and cover it. This tile hasn't been fired yet. And we'll fire that and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna take one and wet it and uh, just let it air out, sit out. Oh, I'm gonna spill here, that's okay. We're just gonna let this sit out wet. Cause I don't know about you, but whenever I use these, I, it just seems like the very next day they're entirely rusted. So, just gonna let that sit. Maybe fold it over like that. And then this one, I'm gonna let sit in water. Okay, now I'm gonna check on these, uh, see what they look like tomorrow. And if it's dry, I'm gonna re-wet this. And we're gonna, maybe it'll go three, four days, maybe even a week. Okay, day three. This is actually going a little slower than I expected. We do have rust uh, showing itself throughout the pad. Obviously it's most aggressive on the bottom where it's been sitting in the water though. It's been three days. And I've been doing that once a day. Now this one, you know, one of the questions I had was, does it, does the oxidation of the steel use up all the oxygen? Is this now a low oxygen environment, which might inhibit future? It's not that murky. Let's see if you can see. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be hard to see on camera, but it does look like it's breaking down. Uh, so I do think it's working. Uh, undoubtedly it would work better if I put like an air stone in there for like a little fish tank, you know, a little bubbler, but this to be uh, an easy experiment, so. Well, it's been five days and I'm not sure I'm impressed. I definitely rusted on the bottom, but I've been debating whether or not I want to fire both kinds. Uh, the real question is, is it helpful to pre-rust versus just throwing it right in the kiln, which we're going to do. And so I think this one's going to be the more interesting of the two. In hindsight, I wish I had held on to the rusty water treated example because I could have probably taken a brush and painted this on a pot to see if I could get something closer to a red. Now, see that's irritating. The water's black but I'm not getting any of the reds. Clearly with the lid on, it was running out of oxygen. But something happened, so here's what I'm gonna do. Oop. I'm gonna tear this in half, best I can. I'll just put these in there. And you can see I have markings, one indicating covered and one indicating open. So I remember which was which, but I'm gonna fire this tonight and then uh, we'll see what we get. Well, here's what we got out of the kiln. Uh, this is actually really interesting. Here are the two that we gave the water treatment to and dead giveaway. These two have like brown, reddish smudges. So, uh, but interestingly, where's the brown rust? Where's the red rust? I, I fully expected the uncovered st ooh, steel wool to just turn, I don't know, bright red like rust, but uh, apparently no difference. There is a little bit more of a, a brown tinge to this one than the others, but not much. And then I'll show you the covered and uncovered no treatments. I mean, they look identical. 
So number one, I'm already thinking that any sort of pre-treatment is uh, not necessary. So, but I want to show you this. I, I touch it and it feels super, super soft or crunchy, like sugar crystals or something. I have a, a handle on this plaster forming tool, almost completely powdered already. Now, if you know why this didn't turn red, uh, let me know. I mean, it's an oxidizing environment. Uh, I don't know why I expected iron oxide to be red, like it is as rust, but let's see what we got here. So tiny, tiny, fine pieces. The next question is, what does it do when you put it in a glaze? Let's find out. So I'm, I'm keeping open the idea that maybe, maybe these will be different, but I don't think that whether they were covered or uncovered in the firing is gonna matter. So to cut down on the number of tests, I have two. And I honestly don't expect them to act any differently. But I'm gonna take and use this one inch stainless steel marble as a pestle and just kind of mash these up. Let's take a look here. Well, I don't see anything fibrous. When I rub it together, I don't know, it's hard to say if it's a fine grit or if there's actually any fibers, but it looks very homogenous. So I think it's gonna be good. So here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna make a little pile on the counter of some of, some of each of these. And I'm going to use this as a rim dip test. I'm going to take these two little bodies here. They're test bodies for chest pieces. And I'm going to dunk them in white and bring them right from the bucket and rim dip each one. So I can have a little side by side to see is there any difference on the same white glaze between these two. So number one, let me get these dunked and dipped. All right, there you go. Okay, so that's our first test. Okay, next step is to start dipping these, these pieces here. The first glaze is gonna be Bailey's Red. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Woo. Well, I hope that does something. Okay, so that's the first one. Place number two is a Chun Sea Foam. Man, that's a lot. <laughs> Uh, it might just melt it all off. I don't know what it'll do, but we'll go ahead and fire these tonight. I wanted to point out that I noticed that even though I said these two look the same, their remnant piles on the countertop, in contrast, really do not look the same, do they? I wanted to point that out. Maybe there will be a difference between these, these two little test bottles. We'll see. You know, I thought before I call it quits on this test that I'd do one more. Um, sprinkling it on the outside is fine. But I'm going to take the, the water treated and I'm going to take the non water treated, everything I have left over, and I'm going to mix it in, oh, I don't know, a little less than a cup of white glaze. This is gloss base number two from John Britt's book with about 9% Zerco packs. Now I'm not going to sieve it, I'm not going to immersion blend it. I'm not even going to measure obviously how much I put in. This is just kind of one of those Hail Mary tests where well, you just see what's going to happen. And if something cool happens and you come back and take your measurements and do more tests. But 
already and that looks surprisingly different all right now I guarantee I'm gonna spill it that's okay all right it's on really heavy I'll sponge this off I think I'm gonna take this over a bucket and I'm just gonna throw some drips holding it upside down along the outside uh, just because Okay, well, I'm really, oh. I'm excited to see what this is going to do. Probably a big, fat, hot mess, but we'll find out tomorrow. So here are the homemade iron oxide tests out of the kiln. Uh, I want to show you, it looks really interesting. First thing to notice is that you c there is no discernible difference between the water treated and the unwater treated they just thrown straight into the kiln so I certainly won't be wasting time doing that anymore but let's see what it does first thing remember we took all the leftovers and threw it in a white glaze in fact a Zir Zircopax white glaze and it easily darkened it like you would expect in a high iron like a temaku and also not too surprisingly it's all bubbly because I really put a ton in the inside it pooled down there it was it was way too thick but in terms of color it works like a red iron oxide and this was kinda cool there's almost an iridescence to it as you recall I put a ton on some like little blistering right here I don't know maybe that was too thick right there I did put a lot on but I think that's interesting you can see it's kind of dull but I mean it did something that's pretty cool so let's see the red now the red is not as dramatic of a color shift which went really I mean there's a ton of red iron oxide in this recipe already so I guess it doesn't blow my mind but so that's not really a win, but it tells me that firing steel wool and grinding it up is an, an alternative, a homemade alternative for uh, some sort of red iron oxide for your glazes. So there you go.